to our whirlwind tour at Viva 360 VR. We're currently seeing some slides, we we'll just have a few slides and then get stuck into showing you as many features as we can in the time we have. So this is a, a software which we developed called Annotate, Visualize, Analyze 360 Video and Virtual Reality. The basic reason behind it when we started in 2017 to develop a prototype was how can we uh, Rather than use the desktop, how can we inhabit somehow a video in a very tangible way so we can manipulate and juxtapose video and, and just basically do it as if we were in three dimensions in, in a volumetric space. So we developed a prototype and then we've been working on it ever since. And now we're ready to release this version, uh, current version of uh, AVA 360 VR. So uh, here is just some some slides, quick slides, just to give us uh, some idea about some of the features and what the tool will be about. And so it's our flagship software. We've got a number of software we're developing. And this one is for immersive qualitative analysis, uh, complex video data, audio visual data. And uh, we've collected data, as, as we're going to see in a moment, uh, with multiple 2D 360 cameras, as well as external stereo ambisonic microphones, uh, mono wireless mics. So trying to work with that data uh, in, a, in, a t in a tangible way, in a realistic way, means that we will maybe have to work in three dimensions rather than two dimensions of a flat screen. So this software is specifically for working with 360 video, though it can work with 2D video as well as 360. And there are many innovative features, such as 360 video switching between different 360 video uh, source uh, data, uh, with video recamming, uh, mixing of uh, audio live in 3D. Uh, and we have a keyframe image sequence generator that generates a series of images looking into the future. We can annotate the drawings and animate those. Uh, we also have a view of uh, transcripts that we can uh, view a transcript synchronized to all of the data we're looking at. And we have a comic panel generator that generates sequences of panels. Um, so that we can create a comic transcript of some kind. We've got volumetric capture and replay, which is about capturing in three dimensions and then sharing your analyses with others that can then inhabit those analyses and see uh, how it was developing in three dimensions. And we've got a bunch of 3D tutorials and help uh, videos for uh, also project analysis and management. So we can develop very rich projects. If you want more information, you can find about the software and how to download and the demo projects and support on GitHub uh, and uh, this particular uh, domain, uh, Big Stuff Video, and this particular repository, Ava360 VR. We also have a bunch of help pages that are to give you some guidance of how to get started. And then we have a community on Slack. If you uh, join this public uh, channel, Ava360 VR, then you can uh, pose questions or ask about new features. Uh, and get feedback from members of the community. So what we're going to do, this is our last slide and then we'll get stuck in. We're going to present uh, slides as we've just been doing. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, we're going to display some images and 3D objects and manipulate them and also some video and audio sources and show you how that works. We're also going to try and see uh, with eyes in the back of, uh, of one's head so that we can see in, in two directions at the same time. We're going to recam some videos into a new format. We're going to draw and animate anything that moves. Uh, we'll do some particular specific cases of, of trying to animate very quickly. We're going to view some transcripts developed uh, with our software Dope and look at those in VR. We're going to create some comics and we're going to do some keyframe imaging sequences. And lastly, we'll mention about the uh, Volcap uh, volumetric capture and, and replay that uh, we're using to do analysis and share that with others. So we'll try and run through all of this in our whirlwind tour of AVA 360 VR. So um, just to show you now that I actually am in VR, if I switch now, then uh, you'll see that uh, I am currently looking at some data here that we're going to be using for this demo. And uh, here is my slide presenter that I can move around. Uh, and this was slide four. Um, what we can see is uh, as we, uh, I can jump back to the first slide and move between the slides. And you were seeing those uh, in, on your, if you're watching this on video, you were seeing that as the main display. And in fact, I'm in VR when I'm doing that, so I can also work between uh, looking at my slides and uh, look, uh, manipulating things and then deciding which what the audience will see. So uh, let's just try and go through these now. I'm just going to close this. 
the first thing we ought to do is to just to talk about the data we have here, the LEGO demo data, which we collected, which has multiple cameras and microphones dotted about the room. We have two tables, one table here and one table here. And their idea is to uh, try and use the blocks here to reconstruct what uh, one of them is going to see behind the table here. So one of them, this uh, woman here, she's going to run behind the table, look at the, the model that's been created, and then come back and try and instruct the others to rebuild it without touching it herself, or herself. Same as this group, and they're competing on a time basis to see who can do it the first. So just to give you some idea of that, let's just open uh, an image uh, just to show you a richer model. Here we see a richer model of uh, the plan of the room. Here's table one with uh, P2 is the woman here who's going to run and she runs over to this table. And here's the other group here. So they're all numbered. We've also got some idea of what wireless mics they have and also uh, what other cameras there might be in the room filming. So we're going to discover that we don't only have cameras here on the table and cameras in the room, we also have cameras, cameras behind the screen so we can see what's going on. And then we have a wireless mic, for example, the one here is wearing a wireless mic, she has a wireless mic in her tunic there. So that's uh, one image. We can also look at what the model looks like. So I can import another of uh, the Lego blocks model. And you can see here, this is actually what the model looks like that they have to reconstruct. This is what the woman here and the man who are running will find behind their screens. So we can bring in images and we can zoom them. We can also bring in 3D models. So here I'm going to choose a 3D model. Uh, it just shows the, uh, um, the uh, a Lego block here. I'm just getting to uh, different modes that I can move it so I can position it. We could have tried to build the model, but uh, it's quite uh, a lot of work to build a 3D model to, to actually have it so we can actually manipulate it and move it in three dimensions. Uh, and uh, this is uh, so obviously you can make any sorts of 3D models import them into Ada 360DR that might be helpful for your analysis. Okay, so that's that's image and, and displaying uh, images in 3D objects. Now let's just play the video to get started and first we'll open the timeline so we have some idea we're at the very beginning. It's a 3 minute 43 second clip and we're currently at frame 2 so we're just going to play that just to give you an idea of what's happening here at the beginning. Okay, so let's play. And there you can see she runs behind. And uh, the language is Danish, and he was giving some instructions for both groups to get started. So I'm just going to rewind uh, to the beginning, and then what we can do is scrub through the timeline here. So, for example, if I grab here and I scrub, then you can see we can see she disappears from the table. She comes back. I'm just running through the timeline. She disappears again, and she comes back. So each time she disappears, she's trying to find out the next piece they need to do and then she disappears again. And that's so I can scrub through very quickly and find particular points. So we're just going to watch that bit again where he says three, two, one, go. Three, two, e, go. And then she starts running. So what we can do is maybe look at some of the other cameras and uh, things, uh, audio, to see if we can construct a different perspective. So what we have to do is import some of those. What we'll do is uh, take a, uh, a Sync 2D video, for example, there is a GoPro camera on the table of this group, and we'll just open that and put that back on there, and we'll just rewind, and then we'll see her coming back, and we can see the shot here as she's returning, uh, so as she's leaving, we can see her leaving from the table from another perspective. So there's a 2D shot. We can also add a 360, for example, when she runs, what happens around the other side here? So we can open that, that's this E360 on table two. And there I have opened that one. And if I play, we're gonna see her come round. I can actually jump into that. And now we see her here. She's just about to return. She uncovers the model and now she's taking a look at the model. It turns out she can touch it, but she doesn't touch it the first time she goes. And if we go back, we see she's behind this screen here, and they are waiting for her to come back. So that's, uh, we, can, we can use uh, any number of um, 
and video camera shots we can import them and we can play them and get an idea of what's going on in other parts of the space. So um, what's going to happen now? I'll just close that one. And uh, let me just uh, get the timeline back. And we will solo that because now we can do with audio. Now we're listening to the this camera that's in the middle of the room, which is a Insta360 Pro. They're well, waiting. He says something over here, and she runs now. She starts to run. And she runs back. But what she has a wireless mic, so maybe we could open that. If I import again and I go to synced audio, we have a wireless mic for her, and that's this mic here. And that, if we uh, solo that, we can hear just this one. I can just play it on its own. And that's from the very, very beginning. So, but we can play generally the video and then we will sync it together. And now we hear precisely what she's saying. If I return to the master and then I solo that one, that's this general 360 video. Now you see it's quite hard to hear because we're hearing everything in the scene. So we can decide which sources we want to hear and we can also balance them. So for example, we could say we want to play both of these, uh, but we don't want to hear this one, so I'll mute that one. We're just listening to this one and this one. And uh, let's just turn this one down a bit, the general one for now if we play. <laughs> And that's her uh, saying, uh, I'm just going to look again. We can also hear the general ambience of the room because of the, we're listening to, uh, to this general one as well as the audio wireless mic. But what happens if we want to hear this one and what they might be saying on the table as she runs? What we'll do is we will unmute this and solo this one, solo this one, and uh, this one now is muted to the general 360. But now if I move this over here, we'll be able to hear both this one on our right ear and this one on our left ear across the two tables. Now we can hear what she's saying behind there. And on this side, uh, we can hear what they're doing on the table. They're not really saying anything here. We're waiting for her to come back. Here she comes. So now she comes back and we're able to see. So we can use uh, mixing um, of different levels. We can solo and mute different sources and we can get a, a, a better understanding of what's happening. This one should be following her. So those are the uh, audio and uh, video sources that we can use. We can also um, um, animate them as we'll see a little bit later. We could animate this one to follow her. So I'm just going to close these ones for now. And uh, now we're back just to the timeline and the general scene. Well, what happens if we want to see what's going on? We'll just go back a little bit. Uh, when she goes behind here, for example, as she's about to run now, and we want to also watch what they do as she runs and returns, we have what's called the mirror cam. So if we go to uh, this mode of cameras and we open the mirror cam, this allows us, for example, to take a shot here zoom right in and if we lock it that means we can watch what they do while she runs so i'm just going to leave this one here and play it. now we're seeing exactly what's going on behind me while we're looking here we can see they're waiting they look around they look down she puts her hand on the table and they're looking up, they happen to be looking as she turns. And now that she looks down as they're waiting for her to come back and they see her now come back to the scene. So this gives us a mirror cam, gives us a way to look as if we have eyes in the back of our head while we're looking somewhere else in the scene. Uh, so that's very powerful. What we'd also like to do is uh, uh, maybe take a little shot of how she uh, leaves or starts from, from the table here. So if we go back, to the point where she's about to leave. That's from about here, if you remember. 
So he sees three, two, one to go. Let's just try and look at that and see how that evolves. What we're going to do is choose the recam, and that allows us to to zoom in if we want. We want to take a shot here and get an idea of how she begins to turn and, and run. Uh, so this is our start frame. I'm just going to play. Three, two, in, go. She runs. And we'll have that as our end frame. So between these frames, in point, out point, we're going to record and all that. Three, two, in, go. And she's going out of the shot to see what they are. And what will happen is we get a video created, which is exactly that scene uh, with from that view as if we had a 2D camera filming. And uh, we'll play it. Three, two, in, go. And see her turn. And so it's just looping round, we can scrub through it. And this has been uh, exported onto disk, so we can uh, do what we want with that. So we've equated very, very quickly into a, a 2D a recam of a 360 scene. And if there were drawings or other objects in front, we would have also captured those. So when we can go back and find that one again. If we go back and look at unsynced exported, We'll see that this one, if I open it, this is the one where she runs. So we can go back to that at any time. So that's uh, recamming. You can recam uh, any part of the scene and uh, the drawings. So let's look at drawing and animating. For example, if we just go back and we're interested in how she runs and how she turns, then we can open the drawing tool. And uh, let's just try and draw something here. Great. And she's just getting ready, and then she starts to twist, so we could draw a little arrow to twist there, and then she's off. And of course what we know is that she's going to run this way, uh, up up here, to about here. Go around the corner, like this. So you see we can uh, sketch and draw, we can uh, maybe change the colour and we can draw something on the table. So they're about to focus on this. And what we can do is with this canvas here, we can actually draw right on it really close. So if I zoom right in, you can see if we play. In other words, the hand's going to come. There, you can see her hand if we just go step back. Now what I can do, if I just make this the brush size really small, we can just show, draw a drawing here showing that uh, the uh, hand is just coming in to uh, tap up here um, at some point. Um, so what we can do is uh, um, close the canvas and there you can see that little drawing. We can of course move things so we can move them and of course uh, once action has happened we might want to animate these so they appear and disappear quickly. Uh, this one here we can pick up and say you know, move roughly like that. And this one is roughly to there. There we are. So you can see the hand coming forward. We can animate that. So I'm just going to select these now and get rid of them because we don't want them to be in the scene. So I can just select them all like this and uh, delete them. So all these drawings have gone. Um, to animate, for example, let's say we want to animate uh, the movement. If we just go back, we want to animate the audio object. Let's just try that. If I import it again, the synced audio of her running, the, her wireless mic. Now that one is currently here, and we want to animate it so that it appears at the other end of the room. So we hear spatially her sound move around the space. So we can actually have multiple mics and then hear exactly where they're coming from because sound is, can be spatialized in the virtual world. So uh, let's just open the animation tool, and here we have to decide this is the object we want to animate. And uh, what we're going to do is um, uh, decide, say, we want the object to appear about here. So this is where the object will appear. And we're going to insert a keyframe. We're going to play. Three, two, three, go. And now we'll insert another keyframe. And this object now is going to start moving. So what we're going to do is play. Move the object to a new position, insert a keyframe. I'm going to move it again. She's going to uh, let's see, appear here. So we'll put another keyframe at that point. 
and then we can play it again and move it to here to say its final location of keyframe B. So what we can do is just go back and see how it appears. And then that's a little bit of a strange uh, uh, we should uh, just undo some of those and go back and uh, do that again. I didn't get that quite right. That's the point where we're meant to be. We'll add a keyframe um, there. Then she runs. Now we'll add a keyframe here. She runs. And then we'll add a keyframe here. Now let's try that again. Three, two, three, go. You can see it's following roughly. We could have done that a little bit more smoothly. Following roughly. So animation is a way for us to uh, to uh, have objects appear and move. And this sound would be uh, if I solo this. If I haven't soloed it, because it'll go back now. Now we'll hear it will actually track. And now I hear it in my left ear. So she's not saying anything right now, but that object is now animated to follow her, and the sound will follow her, hopefully. Okay, um, so that's drawing and animation. Uh, now we can look at a transcript because maybe we really want to know what they're saying. So if we could move up when Jupe comes back, for example. She's coming back. Let's just uh, put that one away. She's coming back to, uh, to hear what she's going to be saying. Let's just import a transcript, and we have a transcript that we created with uh, our software called Goat. And uh, here you see the transcript, and you'll be able to see this now in the, in the video. Uh, I, I can always go back to the headset view, or to third person, or to the transcript. Uh, so you're, you, it enables you to see the transcript a lot better, um, and uh, you'll be able to see what I'm pointing at as well. So um, the transcript is um, currently uh, P2 is saying OK. She's going to arrive back at the group table and then she's going to say something like, then the two orange will pulse like this. So let's just play that and see how the transcript, uh, which is synced to the video um, using the desktop uh, cross-platform uh, transcription software called Dot. Let's just see how it plays in the video. <laughs> Okay, and uh, you can see maybe I, I can't remember which. Let's go back to 12, uh, 13, 14. Let's loop that at 14, 15 as she's returning to the table, and 16, and let's loop that. So, what we were seeing there, let's play it again. She's coming back, she says okay. And then she says, uh, then the two orange should be placed like this. And we could open up, let's just import a 2D video shot just to show that angle. Uh, we have this one on the table here. We're going to see that as she returns. Put the transcript just here. Uh, and now you're going to see if I show the headset for you. I'll put a, a shot here. You're going to see the transcript of her, how she says, then the two orange, and what she does with her hands. So see she puts them flat like this, the two orange should be placed like this. And it's coming again. So this is the gesture she's using because she can't touch the blocks herself. And this is what she's saying, then the two orange should be placed like this. So uh, that was using the transcript viewer. We can loop, we can loop non-consecutively. So I can loop segment nine and segment 16 and I can play between them and miss everything else. I can show metadata. I can uh, have a whole bunch of things. It can also be live edited, so somebody can be on a desktop computer editing this uh, transcript, and then if I reload it, it will reload the changes live. So it allows you to do live things in VR. It's not so easy to use a virtual keyboard and to edit this transcript, but somebody can do that on a desktop view right now. You can also have multiple transcripts open and jump between them with different types of transcripts, and they're all synchronized. As long as you're using our software Goat to, to do that. Okay, so that's the transcript. Now we're back to the general view. Uh, and now what we can also look at is comics. And we're not going to create a comic because that takes a little bit of time. But I can open up uh, a comic 
or I can input a comic. So I'm going to input one that I've already made. I'm going to take this one, it's an example sequence. It's got uh, seven frames, seven panels. So what we see is that there is a camera here, and this camera is giving a view of uh, the scene. And uh, um, uh, this has been created already, so we have a panel here, the first panel, that's got a shot of the scene as he says, Three, two, in, go. Uh, so are you ready? Three, two, one, go. So that's the first scene here. Three, two, in, go. So he said, are you ready? Now go. Three, two, one, go. Giving instructions, and then they start to run. And that's the second panel of the comic, which has started to run. We have a camera here and the comic generator, you can choose the camera and you can move it at will, you can zoom it in and out, and that creates the shot. You might need to update the frame to get that to update. But here you can see she's running and she started running and you can look at the next one. And then she's looking down. Uh, if we were listening to this one here, we could hear her saying, she probably, uh, this one should probably be in the bottom, she's not quite sure now. And then she says yes. So we're making a guess about what to do the first time. And we have another one, um, where they rearrange the blocks and it continues until she starts running back. Now the camera is pointing a completely different direction. So we can adjust all of these and change the shot. And lastly, we want to do some, we can move and manipulate some of these captions. So this comic sequence is stored on uh, inside the project. You can export the images to the disk. Uh, and then they're hard coded, but otherwise they are fully editable and you can come back at a later time and create new panels, insert panels with the new sequence, update the frames of those updated panels that have already created in the sequence or that have done before. So a very, very powerful way of creating a comic transcript out of 360 data. And in fact, you can, if you have a drawing here, that will also appear in the shot. Uh, and so you can annotate it and draw it or have a 2D video appear in the background and it will, and it will appear in the shot uh, as it's created from the panel. So this is very powerful. I'll just close that one. Um, and lastly, we're going to see about keyframe, and then we'll finish on Volcap. So if I go to keyframe sequencer, it could be we want to see a particular shot of what's going on as somebody uh, does something interesting. So if we just go back again, what we're going to see is uh, a refresh. He's going to say, yeah, go to the rally. Now this is three, two, one, go. If I refresh. There we see uh, her about to go, and if we actually include more frames, then on, on the frame interval of every five frames into the future, we get a new image. So if I expand it to 12, the maximum, we'll see this is at uh, the current time, in the timeline. This is five frames ahead, 10 frames ahead, 15, etc., etc. And we see she's only beginning here to start running. And that's at the point where he says three, two, one, go, and then she starts. But if we increase the frame interval, let's say up to like nine, we'll see that now it's updated automatically that she is starting to run much earlier because this is zero, this is nine frames ahead, 18 frames ahead, etc. So we can create uh, just the right sequence to show an action. This one is maybe a bit too much. If we go back to, to, to uh, maybe eight, maybe seven, and Seven, and she's drawn out the image there. Seven, six, six. We're just catching her. So here she hasn't moved, and then she starts to move, and uh, then she's almost out of the frame. We can move this and get a better shot if we want, and we can zoom it as well so we can get it a little bit better. So there we've caught the cat before the mouse. We can also look anywhere in the 360. A video so here we can see that he's also stepped forward but he hasn't got that far compared to her she's really launched herself whereas he on the like the last panel has just stepped forward uh, so this gives a very powerful we can save to disk and that will save the, the date and time and also the frame number for um, the particular sequence so we can always go back and reconstruct it we know exactly uh, maybe the time span even if we know the frame rate with it so that's a powerful way of creating what Newbridge and Mary wanted to do in the 19th century. Uh, for example, a galloping horse to capture uh, using chronophotography uh, a series of still images. And we can do that with the 360 here. Not only we can we capture 
looking in this one direction only, we can also turn anywhere and see anything into the future. Okay, so uh, just to finish, this is, uh, uh, in fact, I made this, uh, while I was doing this, it's a volumetric capture. And this means that the, the uh, I'm capturing everything that I do and I can replay it uh, at will in the future. So uh, uh, that's a very powerful uh, technique for capturing and analysis is emerging using the three-dimensional tools and workspace and then uh, we somebody else in future time or yourself can replay that and position yourself uh, maybe bring up new tools so it's a very powerful uh, uh, technique which is I'm not going to demonstrate it here now because um, uh, we'd have to finish this for cap and uh, redo another one um, this is very powerful for showing the, uh, the ways in which one can create uh, an archive of, in three dimensions of the, uh, how an analysis is being developed while commentating on it using a microphone or a headset and explaining it to somebody in the future as notes to oneself. So this is not just a video recording, it's not just a set of images, it's actually a volumetric code-based capture that's independent of any camera position that allows you later to re-inhabit that analysis. Okay, so we've done quite a lot. A whirlwind tool, it took a bit of time. Uh, we've shown you only the basic features and I've explained them. You can go, uh, if you're trying Ada 360 VR, then uh, if you haven't already downloaded it, uh, get a VR headset and try it. And uh, try uh, all the tutorials and the help that we've given. Uh, many of them are uh, ball caps, some of them are just videos. Um, and the volumetric captures are give you a way to better inhabit and try the tools almost immediately while we're instructing you. Uh, so that's uh, the whirlwind tool. Uh, uh, give it a go and enjoy uh, and give us some feedback uh, so I can give up on uh, experiences and maybe even 